Welcome to Celasta Circle. I'm Angie Sedeth Walsh, and my co host is Kate Robertson. Hey, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest and our very first guest on Celasta Circle. We have Carrie Cicely with us, who is the author of Parasites Inside Me. She has written this book as her personal journey dealing with parasites and conquering them. And she has a wealth of information for us today, not only the information, but also sharing what got her through her fight and how her faith saved her. And there's just, it's a, it's a massively inspiring story as well as full of information that I feel everyone needs. So let me introduce Carrie. Carrie. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We're so excited to have you. What we've been through is an inspiration. It's just, Carrie, your book, I'm just telling you, it's intense. I keep saying this over and over, but I had to put it down several times and I was making notes for this interview and I was like, I'd go out there and I'd have to listen, I'd have to play a game of Russell or I'd have to like, you know, listen to some music or go talk to my mom or something because I was like, dang, this book is intense, man. Like it's, it's taken me back to like certain things that I went through with doctors and the treatments and just the different things. And it was like, this woman has been through it. And she is here to tell you about it and to help you with her knowledge. Her knowledge is astounding. And the people that she works with and knows, she has an upcoming book tour she's going to be doing. She has an upcoming doc- documentary with a couple of very well-known doctors. Um, I got to meet one of them <laughs> <laughs> first back in 2017. But there's, I mean, you want to talk about those things? Yeah, so we are uh, recording the documentary um, January 14th, so it should be available sometime in March. Um, Dr. Mikevitz and Dr. Brian Artis will both uh, be joining us in the documentary. And Dr. Leslie down, uh, she's a naturopathic doctor down in Louisiana. So um, it'll be a lot of information. Um, There will be information about testing. Um, testing for heavy metals, which is directly tied to all of this, um, as well as just information on how to safeguard you and your family. And um, so that'll be coming out in in March sometime. So that's pretty exciting. Um, Watch that. uh, It'll be on uh, Vimeo. Okay. Mm hmm. Most of you know the Vimeo is an app and you usually have to pay a few bucks to like watch something, correct? Correct. So I've watched, I've watched different things on there. Um, So on Carrie's website, parasitesinsideme.com, if you're curious, if you have uh, parasites, she has a stool kit that you can get off of her site. And do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, so we, um, we have a, a, a stool test that you can submit um, through PCI, uh, Parasite Center Incorporated, out in Arizona. Um, you simply order your test. We do have a discount code on there. It's uh, Sicily, S-I-C-E-L-Y-7. It gives you 7% off of your purchase. Once you get the test, you'll submit your stool uh, sample, send it back to Arizona. Make sure that you send it Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, Overnight it back. They are closed on Fridays, so you don't want to send it on Thursday, and then it sits there all weekend. Um, So submit your test in in just about two weeks. They will email you your results and let you know um, what eggs that they found, bacterias that they found. Um, Because, you know, a lot of people too have like a a yeast infection, uh, candida infection, and um, candida does mimic parasites. So the behaviors, the um, effects on the body, the symptoms, they do mimic parasites. So sometimes it may not be parasitic infection at all, uh, but it would be the bacterial aspect. And they let you know that what you have 
um, and they rate it on a certain level. So one to four. So one would be you have it. It's higher than normal, uh, but it's, you know, it's not a four, which is the highest. And so um, that will help you determine what it is that you need to change in your life to help you. So when you would get your test results back, where would they go next? Is there some? No, it depends. Um, if they have a good relationship with their doctor and their doctor trusts them and they trust their doctor, um, their doctor can help them with that. Um, if their doctor um, is not willing to help, which, you know, we, we know that there are many, many doctors out there who don't believe that parasites exist in the United States. So they're not willing to help anyone. Um, you know, they want to call you crazy or delusional, delusional parasitosis is a real, uh, famous term that they like to use. I did not, uh, get that diagnosis, which is probably a very good thing. Um, but there are many women who do, and many men that do get that diagnosis and don't accept it, um, you know, don't, don't let these doctors push you around to put something false in your medical records that will follow you for the rest of your life. Um, at least seven years, right? Cause every seven years they do a purge, but yeah. um, they, it's they off my records now from one doctor. He was mad yeah. because I had had a stroke and I was in the hospital and I had already tested CDC positive for Lyme twice. I had two tests. He wanted to do a spinal tap on me. So he could say he was infectious disease doctor. He wanted to be the one to say that I have Lyme and I go, it doesn't matter. I have it, you know? So I don't need to do another test and exactly like a spinal tap test for me, anything that could go wrong would go wrong when I was going through all of this. And I was just like, I, I don't need that. You know, I already have two, I'm registered with the CDC in Atlanta and in Indiana. And even though I was bitten outside the United States, but still he, and he discharged me from the hospital. I went through a lot of things similar with you where I've had doctors that was one doctor. She ripped up a, a medication in my face because I wouldn't get the spinal tap. And I was like, I'm not getting it. I don't need it that bad. You know? And I just left the office and I was got my $20 back for my office visit too. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Like, well, not. you know, it, it's interesting that you say that, you know, that doctor just wouldn't accept the results, even though you were registered with the CDC. Um, when you look at my journey, you know, I had 43 scans done in nine months. That's just the CT scans. That's not talking about the MRIs for the brain scans. So when you go to one doctor and they do a scan and you get the reports from the radiologist and then you go to another doctor, that doctor wants to do another scan. So there has to be a monetary benefit for them to want to do another scan, because even though all that radiation that they did on me was highly dangerous, all the dyes that they were putting in me was highly dangerous. It wasn't a matter of my safety. It was a matter of something else. And so there would be no real reason because that scan that I had three days ago from today um, is not going to change what you're going to see today. And so if you don't have 43 radiologists that know how to read scans um, that you can rely on, um, but they want to do another one. It's just absurd. And, and in my opinion, it, there has to be some monetary value for them wanting to do that. I agree. There ha and, and also some doctors have, they have ego. Now I have met, like I was very lucky with a doctor that did find my Lyme um, because of the way he tested. So he did hair, blood, saliva, stool, and urine. So he tested everything and he came up with, you know, that was a CDC, CDC positive test. Then I had another one done that was a little more invasive. That was right. My blood went to Igenix lab for 10 days and was analyzed and, and they did things to it. So they had like, they broke it down even more. That's where I found out about the 12 bands of Lyme, the two strains of BART, you know, like 
um, I knew I had those things, you know, at Babesia, then I identified protozoa, the moldy, all of this stuff. Like it was just a more, uh, like solid thing. So like I had, I had two, I had two CDC positive tests. The CDC was chasing me down. They were calling me. They were sending me postcards. I'm like, what do these people want? Like, you know, I'm, I, I, so when I, they were, they were wanting to know, you know, when were you bit? How long have you, how long have you been sick? This is like a, because my test was so like off the chain positive 12 bands of Lyme. I mean, like they were like scratching their heads and I'm like, I haven't been bitten recently. It's been 16 years. And we figured that out from another test of when approximately when I got bit. And when I, now with all that I know about Lyme, you know, I was bitten in another country. So when I came back and I was sick, that should have been a red flag. And I'm sure like with you, there's, when I read your book, there's so many things. It's like, it's screaming to the doctors that there's something wrong. And they're even some of, some of the doctors even encountered some things where they're like, oh my gosh, it looks like a worm. The one, the one doctor that was trying to get the thing, uh, uh, the sack off of your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lesion on the back of my throat and I had been seeing, uh, one particular PCP, uh, nearby. Um, he told me he didn't see anything after just, uh, a week prior, he was treating me for thrush, but now all of a sudden he doesn't see anything. How can you not see a lesion on my throat? So that that was pretty like what you said, like in your book, you talk about a lot where the doctors diagnose you with things and they believe you. And then all of a sudden you go back to them and they recant everything. They're like, they have the arms crossed and they're like, no, we don't believe that's true. And I've had it happen. Kate, have you had it happen? Mm -hmm. Sure have. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that story though, with that doctor and how she was trying to get that out, you your book, it, everything is told, even though you say you held your emotion out of it, I could still feel the emotion in the book. I cried. I like, I was just, I was so amazed at what you went through and where you are now and all that you're doing to bring this to light. So are well, you certain- th- th- I did a lot of crying. I cried every day. Yeah. Um, it yeah. was, a, it was a difficult journey in every facet of life. And, um, it was, it was very, very emotional. Um, you never believe that the people that you trust, the very people that you trust with your life, who took an oath to, to help heal you. And as soon as you say parasites, they discard you. They work to destroy your life. They give you delusional parasitosis uh, diagnoses. They right. have diagnosed some people with, you know, schizophrenia or some sort of mental illness. No, none of that is true. It is all a lie. Uh, the facts are that, that we have people that are deathly ill and suffering. And these doctors who refuse to help, who cross their arms, who say it doesn't happen here. Well, they need some help themselves because they obviously don't understand how the ecosystem works and where parasites fit into the ecosystem. They obviously don't know about the chemtrails being sprayed with heavy metals and lithium that we're inhaling, that's coming into our water, onto our food, our cattle are grazing the very heavy metals. And so that say that, that's a conspiracy theory, chemtrails. But I will tell you this, I read an article just recently where NASA came out and and said that they have been doing the chemtrails. Well, and they also admitted they're spraying lithium. Yes. Um, And then we've seen uh, Tucker Carlson. I think he's like one of the first people to ever talk about these things taking place in the sky in the relationship to Uh, I think it was Bill Gates he spoke about. Um, But, you know, until these doctors wake up and understand that we are heavily toxic with heavy metals, making us the hunted, until they wake up and realize what the truths are, 
you know, there's going to be those very few doctors that will help you um, as a sick patient suffering from parasites. Um, outside of that, you know, you're going to have to go to a holistic doctor, um, a doctor who did get education in parasites, uh, who do understand how to use the natural elements of the earth to heal you. Um, and so there are ways to get the help that you need, but it's going to be the persistence of the sufferer that's right. going to take them there because, you know, we can sit here all day. Uh, we could sell a million books, but until people actually take the first step to heal themselves, you know, it's just all for naught. Exactly. And it's, you know, a lot of it, like, just, you know, like you talk about detoxing, that's part of a Lyme protocol as well. You have to, you have to detox doing salt and baking soda baths. Um, you have to, uh, your diet, you know, your, your water, your exercising, your sleep, like all of this is important for maintaining your health. You know, um, I, I don't go to fast food and I'm not bashing fast food, but I'm just saying I eat very clean and anything that goes in or on my body is clean period. And yes, it is expensive to do that, but I've already lost my health months. I'm not doing it again. And I'm sure you ladies feel the same way. And many people watching. I feel the same way. I'm sure Kate feels the same <laughs> way. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you're being kind of cool today. <laughs> Well, you're asking so many good questions that I'm, you know, just listening. Her story is fascinating and she's right on so many levels. It's, it's things that I did my own research and everything on the same thing because they were concerned about parasites. And but my doctor who was leading that charge ended up having issues with health insurance covering certain um, scans and tests that she wanted to get done. Um, she got some ridicule about different things. And she, she's from India. That's where she went to school. And then she did her residency here in the United States. So she learned both ways. And you I know. Those are the best doctors, the ones that have the Western training. So they understand how the body works and functions. And then they go for the natural training as well. And so, um, and even what I think a lot of it is, you know, other countries, you know, when you're talking about like the Netherlands, Vietnam, um, India, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Mexico, when we look at these other countries, even Brazil, you know, those doctors all get lengthy, in-depth training about parasites and the pathology of, um, they understand because, you know, in their communities, it's not a hidden secret like it is here in the United States. Everybody wants to keep it quiet. Uh, they have, you know, the sufferers have shame and embarrassment um, as far as like the doctors, people in the medical industry, they have denial. And so nobody wants to have this conversation about parasites and what does it mean? How does this happen? But in other countries, it's, it's at the communities at large know how, um, how it works. They know how to treat. They don't need a doctor to treat them. They can go into any store and buy any medicine over the counter. It's only here in the United States that you have to have a doctor give you a prescription for an antiparasitic um, so that you can help yourself. But in, in some of these other countries, that's not at all the case. Um, so when we see those doctors that come from Pakistan and India, Iraq, um, over here, um, a lot of them know about the parasites because their education is completely different. Um, here we have the Rockefeller med schools. Um, over there, they're independent med schools and they're honest about what, what takes place in our body in relation to the environment. Um, they want to know and they want to help people. But what we see here is 
um, completely opposite. We see people that either don't know or deny to know, and then um, the refusal to treat. You know, we, we can go to the doctor and get prophylactic treatment for a flu that they didn't test to see what strain it was, but you can't go to the doctor to get treatment for a parasite prophylactically just in case you did have it. Um, and so it's kind of a double standard when you look at, you know, the good doctors versus, well, the not so good doctors. And it took me seeing a lot of doctors um, in a lot of places to get my team of doctors together to help me. Mm-hmm. And um, it takes a lot of work. Um, I actively seek out doctors who are educated in other countries because I don't want that doctor that received Western Rockefeller medicine uh, training. Um, I look for those doctors that were educated in some of those uh, countries that I stated. And um, they, for me, have been the best doctors to assist me in getting well. I did do in 2018 and 2019, I did interview a lot of doctors that they were Western and I, I say Eastern, Western and Eastern trained because Eastern is natural, a nat- more uh, holistic and homeopathic path. And I, I searched out people that from all that, that treated all different things and they had all different paths to wellness because I wanted people to have resources for that. And so, you know, and I, I believe I'm a hard, a hard sell, like you've really got to know your stuff. And for me to say, yes, I can with out a doubt, refer some to someone to you because we all have people contacting us all the time, asking us, how did we get well? How did we get to, um, a wellness state? What did we do? It's not one thing we've all went like multiple things that we had to do over years time. So, and then to maintain your, your wellness state is that's also something else. It's a never ending thing. So, um, but to refer someone to a doctor that can help them is key as well as helping them, you know, you educate them the best you can. We're not doctors, but we should have some letters behind our name. (laughs) Yeah. It's yeah, a, absolutely. I have a name because, you know, it's like a G rating on here. So. <laughs> but I wanted, um, what else do we want to talk about on here? You, like going back with your, your stool test, um, you suggest that people have that done once a year. Yes. Because, you know, with all the toxins constantly uh, being bombarded in our foods, our air, our water, you know, you can be fine right now. And in six months, you're not fine anymore. Um, and so you do want to stay on top of it and you do want to keep an eye on it. Um, so like last, last December, I had a test done and I resulted with Dientomobia fragilis, which is a protozoan parasite. <clears throat> that protozoan parasite is a parasite of Ascarius lumbricoids, which I did have. Um, So parasites have parasites. So if you have one, you have two or more. Um, I emailed uh, Dr. Theodore Nash's nurse um, at the CDC, and I told him about my recent diagnosis. Um, His response was that Dientomobius fragilis is quite common in the United States. Um, right. That yes, that my doctor could treat, and so um, I had sent the report to my doctor, and she said she called and she says I've never even heard of this parasite, and um, she says but it fragilis indicates that it's a very fragile parasite and easy to kill, uh, so she did. Um, treat me uh, for that particular parasite, but that it was interesting to both of us that the CDC's nurse, um, one of the nurses, uh, told me that it's very common. Well, if it's that common, 
nobody sent the report to the doctors because they've never even heard of it. Hmm. Now, the Centers for Disease Control, that is their job to notify doctors. Somebody, somebody failed on that job. Yeah. I feel there's a lot of fails on that job with those that three-letter organization. Because like with Lyme, it's happened it's with Lyme too. Because otherwise it would be, if, if they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, there wouldn't be all of this having to, to inform people, having to talk about, tell your story, having to write a book, having to do all of the things. Yes, education is important, but like to the depths that you're going to, to talk about all of this and all of the studies that you've researched, all of the people that you know that you've interacted with, this, it's mind blowing. And you are, you're a book yourself with all of the things, the, the, the parasites that you, like the word, I don't even know how to pronounce them. I have trouble with some of the, the medicines to treat them. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm having a good brain day, then that's good. But you know, um, so I wanted to talk about like another key factor here with people when you're going through this, you had a great support system. You had a great husband, you had great family members that were helping you. A lot of people don't have this. And so what is your, what is your thoughts on that? What is your suggestions to them? Well, I talk about um, a little, little glimpse in my life through this journey. Um, initially, you know, I didn't have the doctors that were believing me. I didn't have, um, even my husband was having difficulty believing that this was even possible. Um, my children still, uh, believed me, uh, my sisters, my mom and dad, none of them ever came out and said they didn't believe me. Um, and I had one sister that called or texted me every day just to tech, check on me to see how I was doing because emotionally I was, I was gone, you know, I mean, it was, it was very difficult. Um, and so I did separate myself from everybody for a little spell. And I did that uh, emotionally for me because I needed to gather my game plan. I needed to gather my thoughts. I needed to come up with a plan of what I was going to do, how I was going to do it and who was going to help me do it. And, um, I didn't have those answers right off. I had to, again, turn it over to my God and let him guide me. And he did when I felt um, the message come to go left or right or whatever. I did whatever uh, would hit in my brain. And um, it's, a, it's a matter of just listening to the messages that we get from our Savior. Uh, because he can do all things. And through him, we can as well. Um, and so there was a time frame where I did separate myself, even though like we were all in the same house. Um, I just wanted to be left alone. I sat on the porch uh, trying to figure out what was going to be my next move and how was I going to do it? Um, so for the people that don't have that support, I get it. And I understand that. And sometimes, sometimes not having people bombard your, your space in your mind is sometimes better take that time to reconnect with your God to understand what is happening and what does God want you to do and how is God going to lead the way and so take that time that you are alone that you don't have those doctors that will listen to you um, or you don't have the family members saying I'm sorry that you're going through this I don't know how to help um, because they don't people that are in your life, they do not know how to help and they're at a loss too. So, <clears throat> uh, looking back in hindsight, I can say, don't be so hard on them. Um, you know, because I was, I felt like nobody was fighting for me. And what I learned was that they couldn't have fought for me. It was my fight. It was yeah. not their fight. And when you understand that, um, 
we came into this world, we got to go out alone and there are fights that you have to fight alone. And so um, understand that, you know, when you have a doctor that don't know anything about parasites, they don't know how to help you. And it's the same thing for your family member, even more so because they don't know about parasites either. And they don't have the medical education or the knowledge to even think about helping. Um, And so they can't. So don't beat them up so badly. You know, I talked to my son after um, all of this and and we have cried together. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's good. It's a soul cleansing. It's letting it out. Because, you know, he, um, and he told me, he said, I didn't know how to help you. And, you know, so me being hard on him, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about him. It was about me. And sometimes we have to find our fight alone. And uh, thank goodness I did. I found my fight and uh, I took it, you know, but we can't, we can't blame uh, everybody around us who doesn't understand um, how to help us or what to do. We can't blame them. Um, and when you're so, out of it, like all of us have, I think you start gaining perspective that like you weren't the only one going through it. You were facing the hard part of having yeah. to, but everyone that loves you and is around you, they were going through it in a different way. Yes. And it's like your son saying that, you know, he, he couldn't help you. I've had conversations with my kids where I've like, you know, they're like, it's nobody's fault, you know? Right. And right. It, Oh, you have Lyme rage with Lyme. You go through that because when it gets in your brain and I apologize to them for times where I, I know I had spoken horribly to them and yeah. if, he was like, mom, if you were really like that, we wouldn't still be talking to you. Mm-hmm. So, but they all, everyone after, you know, you, you're in, you're getting into, you know, you're well in the state, you're getting into, you know, things are settling down. Everyone is healing. You have to go through the healing then from going through that you go on your journey then your kids go on their own journey like they're all it's it's the healing and you finally and the dynamics for every person is different you know just like my son you know he wanted to help but he's you know he's 14 what's he gonna do you know and my husband same thing you know but he didn't know what to do and so you know I took my anger out on them uh, because I felt like nobody was fighting for me, but it wasn't their fight to fight. It was mine. I had to fight for me. And, um, you know, once you do that and you stand up to some of these doctors um, and you get your courage to speak your truths, and that's what this is all about is our truths. There will be nobody who will deny my truths because they are not, uh, they have no place to deny it. These are my truths. I know them to be true. And, you know, there is nobody in this world can, who can deny my truths, just like nobody can deny your truths. And it's important uh, what I learned. And, you know, of course, I didn't ever accept uh, any doctor who uh, belittled me, mocked me, made fun of me, gaslit me. And those all these doctors and nurses have done that. Um, But I got the last laugh because while they did nothing, I did something great for myself, you know? And so um, they get to live with what they failed to do. And I get to live with what I was able to do through the guidance of my God. And hopefully, hopefully the doctors will have, learn something because if someone came in after you with the same symptoms and having the same issues, hopefully they were reminded of you and are like, well, maybe there's something to this. And so I always have to like, say there has to be like, and there's some doctors that won't ever get it, but the ones, you know, they start putting the puzzle pieces together. If, if they're, you know, seeing multiple people coming in with, the kind of things that you're describing, the kind of things that you've went through, um, hopefully that they'll be able to, to help. But if not, the other thing, like I, 
I want to help people get across is like, we don't want people to go through what we went through. So we're trying to help you not go through where you're spending. Like you said, you went through your retirement and half your husband's retirement. So like, but your health is so important. I mean, you will sacrifice everything to get it back. So why not maintain it when you have it? This is why we're doing all of this stuff. Join us next time on Celasta Circle with part three of the series with Carrie Sicily. Carrie will go on to talk about her upcoming book tour for Parasites Inside Me. She has a book signing at an event coming up called Controlled by Parasites. And she also has an upcoming documentary. And she'll be talking about anything else that she wants to discuss. She has a lot more information and insights to share. So join Angie and Kate once again with Carrie Sicily for part three of this interview on January 12, 2023 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch us right here on Celeste Circle YouTube channel, or you can go to our podcast and listen if you prefer. Also, Celeste Circle, available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, and more. So until next time, thanks for watching and listening. We'll catch you around the bonfire. Don't forget the marshmallows.